Two birds, two bats. And of course, you know them. You love them. You can't live without them. They're crazy people. This little video is filmed at a dive shop called Critter Republic. And yes, I got the t-shirt to prove it. A lot of guys my age come over to the Philippines and we retire and it's economical or it's uh, an opportunity to meet somebody. It's an opportunity to kind of let go of the old life and begin a new life. And where this video is going to catch your attention is that at Critter Republic is owned by a young man by the name of Justin Carmack, who's been on my channel about a year ago. Um, he is 37 years old, and at the age of 21, he just picked up, left, and never went back home. And he left with $300 in his pocket. And now he is the proprietor of a dive shop. Well, that in and of itself is fairly impressive. But what's really going to tug at your heartstrings here is somewhere in the video where he actually tears up and gets a little bit emotional because what Justin has done is he is so grateful for the help and the inspiration and the leg up that people in his early years gave him the motivation to go out and chase his dreams that he is now trying to do his best to pay it forward and as I called it planting seeds of success for people that normally wouldn't have the ability or the opportunity to do so. This is also going to address guys that come over here like myself that once we've gotten into our routine and we've got our happy little lifestyle and everything is going kind of smoothly, we find perhaps that we are a bit bored or a bit unfulfilled or there's some kind of a hold inside of us that we think we need to fill. And I think that in this video, this will possibly inspire you and ignite inside of you if you're already over here or if you're thinking about coming over here a way to combat that boredom or combat that mundaneness that tends to set in sometimes during our retirement years and you're going to be inspired by what this 37 year old man has to say. So here's my interview with Justin. Alrighty boys and girls, well I'm over here at Critter Republic with the Critter Hunter himself, Justin Carmack. Welcome oh, yeah. to the channel buddy. Thanks, bud. Welcome back to the channel. Once again. It's been 100 pounds since I've seen you last. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, know? 99 at least. 99 pounds this kid lost since like, his blast been on the channel. So I we're all very proud. I still get comments Mr. Com that uh, I, I set the F word record on our last video. And you did set the F word I think it's been a while. record on my, on my last video with you. Yes. Yes, you did. Um, what is going on with you, my friend? Oh, my God. I don't know where to get started. I'm so busy, man. Up at five, bed by midnight. You caught me on a good day where I'm not underwater all day. Right. My students canceled today. Somebody right. was sick. So it's kind of nice. Here's what I want to get into with you. Because I know you're a pretty humble guy. You're not a guy to run around and say, look at me, look at what I'm doing. But I'm going to do some shout outs for you. Oh. And that is, you started this business, your passion being diving underwater photography and you take people that are you being the dive master that you are you take people from zero all the way up to your level it's very expensive depending yeah. on, I guess where you're sitting um, but for most people it's a very expensive proposition and yet you've turned it into a business you're 37 years old you've been traveling the world for how long since 2010. Since 2010. And you and I have had a lot of private conversations where you're always kind of bragging about the people that helped you and helped you think outside of the box and that you have to have this mindset of being able to do it and how they promoted you, they pushed you, um, sometimes they goaded you, sometimes they gave you a slap across the face when they thought you needed one. It's a well needed. And, um, 
what you're doing now is the old saying of paying it forward. That's all they asked of me, really. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, I've never been good at uh, showing my gratitude. I, I don't know how to express, I'm just so grateful all the time. Uh, so when I say it, they say, uh, you need to pay it forward. So that, that's what we try to do, especially me and you are not sitting in uh, our own country. We're sitting no. here in our adopted society. They adopted us. They, they let us be a part of their culture. They've, they've more than accepted us. They've made our lives better. And uh, we, in one way or another, or at least, at least my, my personality, my mindset, I need to uh, pay that forward as well. So it's not just, if I go back far enough, in 2010 I'm in university, my professor, he was the first one to slap me in the face and take me by the hand, force me to travel a different way. You don't have to be a rich guy, you don't have to, it's not all all-inclusive resorts and uh, saving all year for your one week, in, uh, or one week a year vacation. He showed me the world and that just broadened my horizons huge. And then after that, it was here. It's just so many people I can't mention, but uh, for example, my instructor trainer. Uh, the reason I can have one of the top instructors on the island in the country is because he has the same vision as me, uh, helping, building up the locals, building up the the guys that are always there for us. They're always freaking there for you but they can't afford this course, that course. They can't afford their own career. Right. This is basically like paying for university back home and then you have a, maybe you have a job. I'm gonna tell you guys, cause he's, he won't. But what he's doing is he's taking local young men and women and sponsoring them on his own dime from what he receives here as income and giving them, as he put it, a path to the future. And where before they met him, they, their future was that of their parents. It was that of 300 pesos a day, just kind of a day-to-day -day substance type of living. Just sustain yourself, uh, yeah. get a job maybe, um, just really, the future was not so bright. Um, in in our know, in our view, it there? was I'm dark. A, I'm having a hard time finding. In our standards part. of living back home, it yeah. was a dark future. In their standards, it's just uh, there's no other future. It's it's not dark because it's they don't know any other way. And so you were asking me earlier, uh, like our intern Shy, what was her uh, future like? What where was she at when you started? Uh, I was, she, she lives in the poorest village, uh, bamboo uh, roofs, and it leaks all the time, and we're replacing the roofs. But really, what would she say? Where, what, what is her path like uh, for her future? Because she's only 17, 16. Okay. And all you have to do is look at her village, her family. They're related to everybody in that village. Huge village. I mean, you see it. We feed them every Christmas for that huge thing. Right. Um, half of them are cousins and they don't move they they move next they get married and move next door right. next door next door there there is no future man they fish all day for maybe they catch nothing maybe they make 300 pesos uh or they commute all day to go work at robinson's or uh jolly bee or to clean at this resort or do something you know they they don't know they can't afford university they're not thinking about being being a lawyer they can't afford, you know, there, there's no options. Right. Even even the ones that have high ambitions and go work overseas as a OFW, OFW. which is unique for this country, uh, they're making $300 a month and they're, they're in servitude. They're being abused in a, dungeon, in a basement in Korea or uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. For us, it's, it's uh, how, how can you live amongst and love your neighbors and not want to uh, make a better life for them. I think that Would sums you do that it for your up. Family? I mean, look at us. We're over here. I'll speak for myself. You know, I can't afford to live in my own country. 
And if I could, I'm not sure that I would have the level of satisfaction that I've achieved here. Just as friends that I've made, people that I know, and what I think you rang the bell with is how we have been adopted by the yeah. people. They and didn't ask us to come here. No. They, they said, didn't ask us to leave. And they're not asking us to make, leave. They're not asking us to make it better either. No. Uh, they're, they're, they've opened up, they've welcomed us with open arms, so to speak. Yes. And uh, I just got my permanent residency like two days ago. Congrats. Um, <laughs> they, they really asked for nothing besides follow the laws. Uh, so it really, really bothers me if we sit around and there's always that one guy that's complaining wholeheartedly about everything you can think of, but will not lift a finger to help. And so my instructor trainer, Mark, Mark Carrion, he's a local Filipino. Uh, he's on my staff as a regular instructor. He'll teach beginners, even though he's, he's the instructor of instructors. He's my yeah. instructor. Yeah. He's, uh, High, overqualified to teach beginners advanced rescue uh, but he 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 has the same vi he likes my vision he sponsored a lot more uh, locals than I have uh, just with the free training because if you really want to like they say don't give them a fish teach them how to fish they'll be set for life well this is big this is this is like going to university back home but even better because you'll have a guaranteed job. So most of the people we sponsor get up to dive master or instructor. I can guarantee them a job with me. I could hire them or I know all the resort owners in this city or other, other countries and I could say, dude, I trained this guy personally. Uh, my, you know, Mark, really awesome reputation. He's trained this guy personally, my, my Mark, my instructor trainer. Um, they'll have a guaranteed job there. I can get them. It's 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 better than a university in Philippines. Let's get back to to is it Shy? Is that her yeah. name? Yeah. Okay. So Shy is seventeen. Yeah. Is that correct? She just she's almost seventeen. Okay. Through no expense to her, only sponsored by you, you're going to take her from bottom to we, your. We level. already have. And we once have. once she's achieved that. This woman, this young woman, will now be able to not only have a much better than average income, but she's going to be able to open her eyes because a dive instructor or a dive master, I don't, pretend, I don't dive, so I don't know all the terminology, but it's a portable job. Oh, very. You can take it to this Africa. Is, this is not like training to work at Jollibee, and there's only Jollibee in the Philippines. Got it. This is SDI, Scuba Diving International, Raid, Patty. These are American and internationally acclaimed teaching agency. So all the money that we do raise, like shout out to my subscriber, Randy Drew, yesterday, he's sponsoring uh, one of the open water courses. Because yeah, this is international training. It's not a lower standard because if it's in a cheaper country or something, this is, this is high, high training standard. Uh, so once you're SDI certified, or Patty certified, you can teach in every country or work in every country in the world. It's it's that it keeps that level of standard, and you have to keep you have to keep staying that level of standard of training or uh, teaching. All right, what would you say to the guy that's kind of like me that says I don't know the first thing about scuba diving or or, or have the ability to do it, but I have other talents. In other words, I was really good at this and I was really good at that. Uh, I'm going to be retiring in the Philippines or I'm going to be retiring in India or Africa or whatever. And I just want to live out my life and relax, but I still want to contribute something. I'm not, I'm not going to appeal to people's, uh, you know, some people just don't want to help. But we're talking about diving because that's what I do. Right. But everybody can help everybody everybody you can your knowledge back home even as a high school dropout is more than above average here uh, you can you can part and you can you could guide somebody's path to less than mediocrity that they're already destined for you know what comes to my mind is that there's a lot of guys retired guys like me older guys like me and whether we like it or not we have acquired some wisdom 
and you have a lot there is the ability of just a mentorship in other words there may be a guy out there that was really successful in business and he sees he sees a young uh, shy type of person that wants to start her own business she doesn't want to do diving she wants to open up a convenience store or a dress shop or the oak eye oak ideal the what, he what she take, knows yeah he what she knows what she's used to but he could take her to the next level and with just a little bit of time a little bit of guidance um, doesn't have to spend a lot of money but he can impart that wisdom upon her that hey you're instead of doing it like everybody else do it this way and take that to the next level just, notch it up just and little it. bits can expand and uh yeah and really take off and then the way i envision it is all of a sudden because you know it's, it's it's a funny phenomenon out here if one guy opens up a uh sorry sorry store the guy says well he sets the one up right next door to it exactly. <laughs> you know they don't have this this, we should have this kind of like space in between us so that we can have our own territories. It's not like that at all. Yeah. Uh, so I say if, if that guy could, could take that woman that wants to start her Sorry Sorry store or Okai Okai store and kick it up to the next level to where it makes more sense, it's easier to shop, things are, are, are more organized, she's more attentive then that too would feed off uh, to other people. They would see her success and duplicate that and possibly bring up the elevation of the self-employed. Hey, ri ri rising tides lift all ships. There you go. And if you're using that analogy, um, I, I had this conversation the other day with somebody about the boulevard. If you look at the boulevard at night, there's all those food carts. Yeah. Food cart, 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 cart. And I was like, oh, cool, this is a popular area. I bet it's awesome. So I went and they had the exact same food, exact same yeah, food, exact same food. I made that food. analogy in another video. And, yeah. oh, really? So me, I was having this conversation with a subscriber or somebody, and they're like, all they would need to do is one cart change to burritos or shawarma or something. And they're so stupid. I'm like, are you going to complain about it? Or are you going to walk over there and change somebody's life? Hey. Go, go educate them and say, hey, I'm gonna guide you for one day in business and you're gonna support your family for life. You're not right. gonna compete over who has the same exact barbecue. Right. Like you could make such a huge difference here. We're talking about scuba because that's what I can offer and my, instruct my network of people. Um, but man, there's so many avenues like, I have a lot of education and world experience, and just talking to you, I, I learn stuff every day. So imagine somebody with a tiny bubble, a sphere of influence their whole life. Yeah. How much you can impart. Yeah. I learn stuff from you in every conversation that I'm like, that's a good idea. Like you were helping me with the restaurant the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. Just this little tip could double our sales. Mm -hmm. So uh, guys come here. Uh, you could do a lot if you don't want to put money into it. You could you could do a lot. And there's also guys that come here to retire and they deserve. They've worked their whole life. They should relax. They 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 they've earned it. Thank you for that. Um, they don't need to. It's not their responsibility. But after a while, you if you've got to know your neighbors, your community, you go to this coffee shop, this restaurant. You see the same people every day. How, how can you not want to make somebody's life better? How can you want to, my dive, ma I have eight dive masters, instruct two instructors. How could I not, how can I see how they live and be like, hey, I'm gonna hold you down. I'm gonna, not even just that, I'm not gonna help you up. Uh, and I know, I absolutely know that the majority of guys think that way. They just don't have, they don't know what to do. Right. I think that the, the message here in this video is that everybody that is watching this right now, there's, there's, two, there's two messages. Number one, I agree with Justin on both of them. Number one, you've worked hard all your life. <laughs> you've put in the nine to five. You don't owe you've anybody You've pleased anything. the boss. You've pleased the wife. You've raised the kids. You put them through college or you didn't. You did what the best you knew how. You did what you're it's supposed to your do. turn. 
it's okay to be selfish. If you want to sit around all day and drink beer, God bless you, sit around and drink beer. But there are, is the majority of the guys that come over here that come and do exactly that. They come over, they shed their old skin, they start to develop a new one, they get into a nice routine, they look around, and no, they're not the guy that's complaining at the coffee shop. They're the guy that's at the coffee shop saying, I'm getting tired of being at the coffee shop. I need to do something more, I used to be productive, I used to be constructive, I used to uh, produce, and I'm getting a little bit bored, or I'm, yeah. getting a, I, I'm feeling a little empty inside. And so, I think that you don't have to spend a lot of money, you don't have to spend even a lot of time, but you can adopt somebody somewhere along the line at whatever level of expertise. Any kind of level. And money. They just have to be receptive to it. You will be the first to admit that you probably went through 20 kids before you found your shy. If I'm, I'm not, I'm not, right. I'm not, because they do I don't, go. I don't agree with just handing out money. No. Um, handing out freebies. No. I mean, Christmas dinner, of we do that fine. Of course. But that also inspires other people to do it. That's different. But uh, what I like is when uh, you give them something sustainable. I, I've volunteered in Africa, South, every continent except for Antarctica. I've, I've been there, I've done that. I've seen what works and what, what is just makes me feel good. And I, I'm not doing it to feel good. I need to leave a legacy. I need to help somebody else's career. When Shai, when Shai is a marine biologist in the Maldives, that I did, I... You did that. Uh, that... I should, that choked you up. I no, can see you no, tearing no, up. No, So I'll say this, because he's getting emotional about that thought, no. is what Justin has done here is he's been planting seeds with these people. He's planting one here, one there, one here, one there. What I would ask is, if you want to come over here, retire, do nothing, but relax because you deserve it, no one's going to judge you. We're all going to dig it. It's all good. Uh, we're not I the, did it for we're not a the long, moral long police. We're, we're not the moral police. We're not I'm not the, a good person No, more than anybody. But, uh, but I'm not going to sit there and listen to people complain if they're not going to fix their... Well, those are the guys that you just shine on and you ignore. So he's planting seeds. And I think the moral of this story here is if you come over here and you find yourself in a routine that you found to be becoming, even though it's beautiful, it's mundane, or it's become boring, or you feel like you need a sense of purpose, then maybe you can search your soul, search your conscience, rack your brain, and say, hey, what do I have to offer to these people that have received me so graciously? What kind of seeds can I plant? What kind of blossoms can I see in the future? What will be my legacy? Anything to add to that? Uh, you can go, you can go all day. I, I definitely, I think it'd be a really cool uh, life retirement plan if somebody came here and got what they wanted they relaxed they got away from the nine to five squirrel wheel or whatever and they made their life better and within some guys within a week some guys within a year or two they realize what else could i do then uh you know they want to feel productive or leave a legacy or something see what you can do uh for the people that have made that possible they've They've, they've secured your uh, happiness and secure your, your well-being for the rest mm -hmm. of your life. Mm -hmm. How can you do that uh, for them? Because I'll, I'll t I'll, we'll end on this. This is my last little note. Is that the Philippines had the ability to take me and many other people that were in broken down conditions. We spoke of our friends, myself, suffering from depression. Some yeah. people on the verge of suicide. It's just, it's just not something to be Some ashamed people, of. Some um, people that were feeling so low about themselves. When they came over here to the Philippines, the Philippines had the tonic water, it had the elixir, and the ability to heal that individual. Bring them up, not to 
uh, a better state, but bring them up to their real state and their full potential. And some of them are now exceeding dreams that they thought they would ever have. And so they too are now planting seeds. Yeah. You're planting seeds. And I would leave you with this, boys and girls. Come over here, have an open mind, do your best to be respectful of the people that are so gracious to you and maybe think, what can I plant that I can see? What will be my legacy? What can I leave behind other than a pile full of money and a bunch of empty beer cans? <laughs> okay, you know? I really wish I could talk about the things that I personally know that you've done that you don't make public. And, we don't go there. Yeah, and my friend Dexter as well. They won't let me talk about the uh, community service, let's put it. Uh, well, it's not important you, to do it so you, you can do. brag about it. It's what's important. The I most, want to brag for you or him. Yeah. You know what I mean? The most I, selfish I, thing, this is, comes from Denzel Washington, is the most selfish thing that you, a man can do is to help somebody and keep it between him and his God and just go to bed at night and say, you know what? I did a good thing today. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully, Justin uh, has done, in fact, I know for a fact that by talking to you today, Justin here has done a good thing today. And I'm going to leave it at that. We'll see you all in the next video.